Back on the GameCube game, um, if I wanted, oh, that's the Wii version. This one over here. This one over here. If, if I wanted to visit somebody else's town or I wanted to somebody else come to my town, all I could do was basically we would trade memory cards and we couldn't even, we couldn't even play together in the same town. Um, that obviously changed once we got to the DS version, but how's the, how's the multiplayer in this game in terms of sort of the, the kinds of things that you can do together? We talked a little bit about the island, but what, uh, what else is there that you can do in town? If you and I want to play over Wi-Fi, um, we have to have our systems friend up. So it's not a software-based friend code system. It's, it's the hardware. It's mm -hmm. on the hardware side. Um, so once we've established that, um, you know, you and I can set up a time and I can open my gate and you can come play in my town. Um, once in town, you know, um, I think most of the uh, activities would probably, at least me personally, the one I'm look, most looking forward to is just going out to the island and engage in, in those tours because I feel like in past versions of the game we did have the timer and people would kind of make up these games using that timer. Um, but with Tortimer, they are hosting these, these tours, you have like these real mini games you can engage in. So. Um, and then certainly, you know, like I said before, um, Bill, if you want to come to my town and check out what kind of you know, furniture I've got and things like that, how I've set up my house, and that's always something I think a lot of people have a lot of fun doing. Yeah. Raiding other towns for <laughs> loot. Okay, that's Nate's style of play. <laughs> well, that's, also, that's also how you get the different kinds of fruit, too, is by <laughs> visiting other towns. Certainly. And so that's still, that still exists. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, and uh, just to expand on what Reiko was talking about, um, if we're best friends, uh, there's an additional level of communication that we can have, at least in terms of setting things up. Um, that way, I mean, you remember how in, in the uh, like in the DS version, you basically would have to have your gate open, and then people could come to your town. Mm -hmm. If we, within the software, have become best friends, um, then I can actually send her. I'll see that she's online. Actually, I can actually send her a message saying, "Hey, open your gate. I want to come over." Mm -hmm. So it's not like you would have even had to set a time. It's just so you you see that you know I would see that Rico's online, and I can be like, "Yo, I'm coming over." Uh, one of the other features that we haven't talked about yet is Spot Pass. Um, what what can we expect in terms of Spot Pass content for Animal Crossing? Um, Spot Pass. The Spot Pass feature was actually added specifically for um, for NOA and for NOE for our territories. Um, because just the environment in, the, in which you're playing is, is different, and by that I mean, you know, in Japan, street pass happens really, really frequently. People take trains, it's, it's a different community culture. Um, here, you know, you've got people living in remote parts where they don't cross, you know, they, they don't have an opportunity to pass by people who, who you know, have the game. So, um, in order to make sure that um, people receive the Happy Home Showcase, this is where Spot Pass, um, the Spot Pass feature is used. Uh, it's the Happy Home Showcase, which is the top part of your town. Um, through Spot Pass, what we're going to be doing is is sending out official um, home data from Nintendo. So, um, you know, who knows whose house you could receive through Spot Pass? But uh, it should be it should be an interesting um, piece of data that people receive. And so then I, when I get that spot pass data, even if I haven't street passed with other people, I'll have those homes show up in my happy home showcase and I can go do the home tour and, and if I see furniture in there that I like, I can order it through a catalog, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and you'll also see the ghost data of the person who lives there. So um, it, should be, it should be really, really cute. We have, it hasn't really come together, but it's, it's on its way. And you can, of course, still street pass as well. I mean, that is fully functional for people who are in or more urban areas or in areas where they get to street pass a lot. You're mm -hmm. still going to get a lot of people's homes from doing that um, and be able to wander around. I like it not just for ordering stuff, but just for seeing, getting ideas, you know, frankly, for layouts of houses and um, how, you know, how people are decorating. Yeah. I have absolutely no sense of that myself. I need, <laughs> I need to research. <laughs> also, uh, there's something called the Dream Suite this time. Uh, Dream Suite is actually another public works project. Um, this is one of the more expensive ones, but um, it's a space where players can go to upload dreams of their towns and also download dreams of other players' towns. Um, and if you go to this town, it's going to be not the actual town of the player, but kind of a, a dream version of it. Um, you're going to see different designs that that player has created. Um, and there'll be a host character, Wendell. You'll see Wendell there, and, and you can actually buy those designs from him. 
so you can um, exchange designs with other players as well. So how, how do we become best friends in the game? Um, it's actually really simple. Um, if you're in my town, mm -hmm. you know, given uh, we've already uh, friended up our systems, so we're playing over Wi-Fi, um, I can just tap your name and best friend you. And as long as we're both mutually best friended, um, then we can engage in that communication that um, Nate was explaining earlier.